Good afternoon and welcome back to the garden. Today is Sunday, December 19th. This is going to be lesson seven, succession. In the garden, when we think of succession, usually it's planting one type of plant after another in the same spot. And that's the old way of thinking. You know, to keep the fertility or whatnot in your soil, that's not how it works. Now, if you want to make a small change, change the way you do things. If you want to make a big change, change the way you see things. Over the last couple of years, I've really changed the way I see things. You know, I'm like most farmers. I started doing this in the late 60s. We tilled everything and we hoed weeds and we added nitrate fertilizer and we did it all wrong. So today, lesson seven, succession. Let's take a look at succession. Looking at it as terms of the garden, in the beginning, there was no life, it was just rock. And we've talked about what dirt is, sand, silt, soil, clay, just different sizes of rocks. And then what soil is, is the bacteria gluing those pieces together, making micro aggregates, along with some other stuff. But that's the basics. So then in the beginning, take a look at this picture of dirt. This was a garden, but it was tilled up, and then it was compacted by rain, and then it dried out. It doesn't have too much life in it. I'm sure that there's a little bacteria, but all that's gonna grow there is weeds. Now bacteria's life cycle is based around nitrates. And if all you have is bacteria, you're just gonna have nitrates. And weeds thrive on straight nitrates. So if you look at it that way, why would a fertilizer company want to sell you nitrogen in the form of nitrate? When nitrate is what causes weeds. You don't think it's because they sell herbicides and pesticides, do you? Now I know we're all in a hurry, but over time nature and those weeds will introduce some fungus. Once you get a little bit of fungus and bacteria into your soil, now you got to look at what kind of plants grow in that. So if you've ever wondered why you can't grow cabbages and strawberries side by side, it has to do with the ratio of bacteria and fungus. So the first crop plants that we can plant in an environment that is high bacteria and low fungus would be your asparagus, your kale, your cabbage, all your brassicas. All of those crops are designed to grow in areas that are not dominated by mycorrhizome fungus. But that's what we want for the crops that we grow. So as the succession continues, and the more fungus gets into your soil, the more ammonias are created, the better balance you have, the better your crops are going to do. Your regular crops, your potatoes, your tomatoes, everything that we normally grow as gardeners. In nature, as succession progresses, it goes from no fungus and very little bacteria all the way to a smaller amount of bacteria and very fungus. And that would be your old growth forests. It's a pretty simple concept, from rock to old growth forests. First, bacteria, and they glue together the little particles and start making structure, and then their predators eat them. A very high nitrate environment. Weeds really love it. And slowly, fungus starts to populate in. As that happens, you change the balance of nitrates to ammoniums, and then the predators change a little bit, and then it starts to balance out. And somewhere around 600 micrograms per gram of soil of bacteria and of fungus is a really good spot to grow your vegetables. Then it starts going a little less bacteria and a little more fungus. So you got more ammonium than nitrate and there's your trees. And then your old growth forest, very highly fungal. Most of that energy from those trees go into the soil. In your weedy plots, only about 10% of the energy of the plants go into the soil. So why isn't the world just covered in old growth forests? Well, because usually there's some kind of disturbance happens. A fire, a flood, us. Every time there's a disturbance that happens, it busts up that web of life and then steps it back a little bit. It can be bad enough that it takes it all the way back to the beginning where there's almost no life in the soil. Tilling is a horrible thing. If you take out all the micro predators, you really mess up the fungus. It's really hard to kill all the bacteria and you'd start right back in a high nitrate environment. But we can fix this. You know, we're very impatient. We want it to happen right now. And we can do it pretty quickly if we put the right life back into that soil. All we have to do is add aerobic compost. And you can do it during the winter. As long as the ground's not frozen, all the bacteria and fungus and their predators keep doing their thing. When it freezes, they just go dormant. Then when it thaws out, there they go again. And then in spring, you can go ahead and start planting. You're going to be in great shape. Well, I hope the way I explain this succession timeline makes some sense to you. You know, I just didn't pull this out of my hat. 
You know, when I started this, I stumbled across Ruth Stout, and she just used observation. She wondered why wild plants grew without any tending. From the Ruth Stout method, I wanted to know why. I wanted to know why it worked. I stumbled across Dr. Elaine Ingham, and she started her studies looking at the digestive systems of oysters and the microbiology that it took. And then in her grad work, she applied that to agriculture. Now, if you don't believe me, you can look up Dr. Elaine Ingham and see what she has to say about the subject. Now, when the life in the soil actually becomes balanced, it takes care of most of the disease and most of the pests, and definitely most of the weeds. Now, if you followed my story, you know I started this because I didn't want to weed anymore. So I started covering it with this organic matter. And unbeknownst to me, I've been feeding the life in the soil. And as I plant it, I've shown you guys the really nice earthworms that I have. I see the proof all around me. I might even have to save up and get one of those microscopes to see the life in the soil. I don't have to see electricity to know the light comes on. And I know it's kind of hard to wrap your head around. Like I said at the beginning of this, if you want to make a small change, change the way you do things. If you want to make a big change, change the way you see things. And I really did see a difference when I started to put the mulch down. It did stop the weeds. I thought it was because it just took the sunlight off the ground. Instead, it's changed the biology in the ground. It's changed the soluble nitrates to ammonium nitrates. Weeds don't like ammonium nitrates. It's got a nice balance. So if you don't believe this is going to work, just follow me and we'll see. It might not, but I think it will. So until next time, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.